Woo. Dude, this, I can't believe it took me this long to check out this dude's channel. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> I love you, Google Foods. <laughs> Dude. Wow. Chef Brian Tao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Guga Foods, I dry age steaks in yeast. And this happened. Before I go on with today's episode, I do wanna shout out my latest sous chef level patron, Patrick Smith. Thank you so much for your support. You along with all the patrons really do help with your contributions. And for those of you who are watching and wanna support further, please consider becoming a patron. Visit the link in the description below and there it'll take you to my official Patreon page where if you join, you can take advantage of some awesome perks. And lastly, for those of you who don't know yet, I do play guitar in a heavy metal band called Lost Becomes and would greatly appreciate it if you gave us a follow on Instagram at Lost Becomes. And with that out of the way, let's react to some shit. I know the video just started, but just wanna say I have not watched any of Guga Foods yet, I've heard a lot about it. In fact, the chef de cuisine of my sandwich shop had mentioned that I should check out Guga Foods and that he does some really fascinating things with meat. If we're starting with a dry aging with active yeast, active dry yeast, I'm probably gonna learn something from here because I've never done anything like that before. Now, if you don't know what this is, let me explain. It is a granulated form from the baker's yeast, a species of a single-celled microorganism known as Saccharomyces. Cerevisiae, which consumes sugars and starch. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> I don't think I could have figured out how to pronounce that, <laughs> how to pronounce that myself. Produces carbon dioxide gas and alcohol as a result. Now alcohol, oh yes, that can be something we can work with. Because I don't know if you remember, I've done a dry aging experiment before using whiskey, and it was a wonderful experiment. It tasted incredible. Wow. A uh, few things. Really cool that he uh, dry aged something in whiskey. That is cool. I gotta see that episode. The production value of his stuff is amazing. Holy cow. And I love the guy's voice. I love like the, that his calm voice. It's, it's like almost soothing. I'm, I'm really liking this. Huh? 44 seconds into the video. A beautiful prime rib roast. Mm. Notice that it's a four bone and cut from the chuck end. Now, since I have quite a bit of it, I decided to go ahead and split it in half. One of them, I'm gonna be using real dry nice. meat Nice, so uh, this is a ribeye. He mentioned it's from the chuck end, so that will be closer to, wait, is that closer to the front legs or the back legs? The chuck end is closer to the front legs. Regardless, I knew it was gonna be closer to one end or the other because I know that chuck is a very tough cut of beef. Generally, the tougher the cut basically means the more the protein was exercised. So something like the tail, which constantly moves around, the shin, you know, the calf, parts like that, again, they're worked a lot. So they're going to be tougher and have bigger muscle fibers opposed to something that's by the rib cage where you know the muscle is not worked nearly as much which is why these cuts of protein are generally much more tender and also much better for a you know grilling application versus something like a chuck or a shank or a, a tail, which you know is better for cooking low and slow. For the real dry age one, there's not much to do. All I gotta do is put it in a cooling rack and then later into my dry ager cabinet. And this is the one we're gonna be using for today's experiment. And I'll be honest with you, this is one of the easiest things to spread on meat. Since they are tiny little micro pieces, putting them on top of the meat is no problem at all. And since the meat is kinda wet, it actually sticks really nicely. So yeah, it's a piece of cake. For the parts nice. that was not sprinkled on, I just gotta use my spatula. Easy peasy. Because once I was done with everything, take a look. This is the wow. world's first. And I only wish wow. you could smell this right now, as it reminds me tremendously of bread. And I don't know about you, but I love bread. If there is anyone watching that's not familiar with yeast, he already mentioned it's a single cell organism that you know is mainly used in bread. That's what leavens bread, aerates bread, gives it those air pockets so that when you mix the dough, it just doesn't stay as a solid block as the yeast 
eat the sugars within the dough, it, you know, essentially like it farts, right? It lets out CO2 gas. I say farts, that's how a, a, a chef explained it to me a long time ago and it just kind of stuck with me. Anyway, that's essentially what's happening. It's a byproduct of the yeast consuming sugars and then that gas is what creates the air bubbles. And uh, that's the phenomenon of bread versus something like a cookie, right? Making a cookie is also a dough, but it doesn't have anything to uh, leaven it, or rather it does, it has baking soda, but that's a chemical leavening process. Yeast is not a chemical leavening, leavening process. It's a natural leavening process. But regardless, if you made a dough and you didn't put anything that will aerate it, it will be essentially rock hard. And of course, the other ingredients in there will affect the final product, but you get the idea. So into my dry ager he goes for a total of 45 days. Ooh, there's some... Um something down there in yellow. I don't know if that's like coated in fat. My chef de cuisine at Mission Sandwich Social, his name's uh, Nick Pace, Chef Nick Pace, someone who's been working with me for a long time. He's the one that told me about Guga Foods and the video he specifically mentioned was dry aging with MSG, which sounds freaking crazy. So obviously this guy really experiments um, and, and gets out there and that's really cool. I mean, we need guys like this dude just pushing boundaries and figuring out like what actually happens if you do something crazy like this. Cool stuff. 45 Once the time days. Was up, I took it out and look. If you look from far away, not much has changed. But a closer look, you can see that a little bit of the moisture from the meat came out. Now, one of the things that you cannot tell. Wow, so cool smell remember when it went in it smelled like bread but that's not what it smells like right now it reminds me a little bit of a fine cheese so that is quite exciting as the next thing i needed to do is to remove all of the yeast so i grabbed my butter knife and went to town removing everything as much as possible doing it little by little makes a huge mess and you can clearly see that some of them get stuck on the meat so after putting quite a bit of work removing as much as i could this is what i was left with wow. the world's first yeast dry age experiment. I mean, this is something you do not see every day. And holding it on my hand is difficult to explain. As it went from beautifully smelled bread to a nicely fine smelled cheese, which got me super excited to give this a try. Uh, the process of dry aging does a lot of things. Number one, it tenderizes. Number two, it uh, extracts moisture. And then when you extract moisture, what's gonna happen? It's going to condense flavor. And then it's also going to develop new flavors. And basically the longer it's dry aged, the more like funkiness, the more nuttiness. Guga here mentioned uh, that this particular piece coated in the dry yeast smells like cheese, makes a lot of sense to me. The process of dry aging is uh, obviously like in, in steakhouses is one of the points that they bring out. Do you want a 30 day dry age stage, uh, dry age steak or a 45, or I've even seen some places have 60 day. The longer you dry age something, the more expensive it's gonna be because you know you, you have to let something sit there in a very specific uh, control in controlled conditions so that it doesn't spoil because if it's too moist or too warm or whatever, the meat will actually spoil, which you don't want, then you lost the product. The more something dry ages, the more expensive it becomes, the more, I guess the term I'll use is like the more exotic it becomes flavor wise. And that is kind of the art of dry aging, but in the dry aging process, you can do it in a number of ways. Some people put seasoning on it. Some people uh, brine, yeah, well, that's, that's not dry aging, sorry. But you get the idea. Anyway, so he's doing it for 45 days. And like I said, it does not surprise me that it has a funky, cheesy smell. And I'm very curious to hear what he says the yeast actually does to the flavor of the steak. Every dry aging experiment, the next thing to do is to remove all of the pellicles. Pellicle is the dried skin, like the layer that forms on the outside. Whether it's like you take, you, you have chicken and you let it dry age. For example, what I like to do with my turkeys for Thanksgiving is like three days prior, I'll brine the turkey and then I'll pull it out the day before and let it sit in my fridge uncovered on a rack. And then the skin kind of dries out, forms what's called, as Guga said here, a pellicle, which is basically like a skin, a dried out skin. And that, when you roast it for a poultry product, 
gives you this amazing crispy product. Uh, for this though, I don't think it'll be particularly appetizing. That's, you know, more or less the uh, for a piece of beef that's dry aged, that outside part's pretty much gonna be spoiled. What's fascinating about beef in particular is that bacteria grows on the outside, not on the inside. That is why you can eat a steak rare versus, um, you know, ground beef where everything's ground together. So you, you have to make sure your beef is very clean before you actually grind it. Otherwise you contaminate the whole pro uh, product. And since I put a lot of yeast on it, it's not gonna be good. That's okay though, as we're trying to find out the best way to dry age steaks. And by the smell of it, this one so far is a success. So I went ahead and continue removing all of the pellicles as much as needed. And once I was done, this is what I was left with. Mm. Two beautiful, perfectly And you can aged. quickly see this is why um, beef can be so expensive. You see how much trim there is and particular, particularly dry aged beef. Yes, after you dry it, not only does it lose a lot of moisture, so what was 10 pounds may become eight pounds and that eight pounds of leftover product after the dry aging becomes more expensive. But then you have to trim all the pellicle off. That's all lost product. So because of that, that is why dry aged meats uh, particularly beef, gets so expensive. Now there is a little bit of oxidation on the edges. That's okay though. I'm gonna leave it because I really wanna feel that flavor. Now mm. remember that we also had the real dry age one. This one here, I'm gonna be treating it exactly the same way. First thing to do is to remove all of the pellicles. And one of the important things is not to be cheap. You're putting a lot of time and effort on this steak. When you taste it, you want it to be perfect. Once I was done with all of the trimming, take a look. We got the yeast on the left. And yeah, the you see that browning is oxidation, you know, but <laughs> that's where you're gonna get a lot of the funk from, uh, which I like. Like, I, I really do like a steak with a bit of funk to it, a lot of nuttiness to it. Some people find it weird, but um, I find it absolutely delicious dry age on the right. Now the big question is how different are they going to be? The only thing that really matters is the taste. Talking about that, I kept the seasoning extremely simple. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper. As now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and cook it. First, I'll be putting a nice beautiful sear. Once done, I'll be cooking it in indirect heat until I reach an internal temperature of wow. 135. For that, I'll be using my wireless thermometers. As now I say, it is enough talking and it is time to grill them. So let's do it. <sighs> Woo! Dude, this, I can't believe it took me this long to check out this dude's channel. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> I love you, Google Foods. <laughs> oh. Oh. Dude. Wow. Cool grill, you, you can see. So whenever you grill something with charcoal or um, wood or whatever, there's always gonna be a hot spot. And you know, this guy clearly knows what he's doing. He's obviously an expert in protein cookery. He's using a grill where it actually like, I guess has sections this way. Okay, you get it seared, oh, it's getting too hot. You can shift it over to a colder spot. I actually often do this with my grills. I have a Traeger grill, which I love to death, but I will always have a couple of really cheap round Weber grills. And I'll actually have one that has a little less charcoal and that's a little cooler. And then one that's just like, ripping hot, loaded to the gills, and I'll start everything there and then shift it over to the other grill that has a little less heat so that, you know, it cooks a little slower and doesn't burn. Dude. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. Fuck yeah. My God, and look at that, that is cool. So he's using the wireless thermometer. I've been meaning to get one of those and he's putting the beef off to the colder, cooler side rather. So he mentioned uh, it, he cooked it in indirect heat. So it's in some ways like, you know, a similar principle to an oven. Wow. Look at that char, baby. My God, if there's someone I want to collab with, it's this dude. Yeah, damn, damn. All right, everybody, here we got our beautiful steaks, my two taste tester. Are you guys ready? Are you oh excited? God. Yes. It's steak, my mom. I love it. Steak is always good. 
Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, here we go. What was that? Why did he put Pepto Bismol on the steak? <laughs> I must say, I am excited for this experiment. We are in for a treat. All right, enough talking. It is time to give this a try. We're gonna go this direction. These two are exactly the same, and so are these. You ready? All right, dig in. Let me know. Give me your honest opinion, the truth. I, I wanna, wanna know, know the, the truth. truth. Just by looking at the fat, I have an idea. You have an idea what it is? What is it, Angel? My guess is it's probably something dry aged. Oh, no, it's not dry aged. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I can't hide it, everybody. This one is 45 days, by the way. Okay. A little bit longer than I usually do because I saw some very interesting things. Wait, you saw some interesting things? Yeah. Happening with the steak? Correct. Oh, God. All right, Who's well, let's luck? find out. <laughs> let's see. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. Cheers. That's pretty interesting. Pretty delicious. It's pretty good. Super tender. Very strong flavor. Really good dry age without being the extra strong that yeah. you get from like 90 days. We got one coming for a year, everybody. Let me know. Are you ready for that? A year? I want to see that. That is our baseline. That is the control. All right. Yeah. So now is our real experiment. I am super pumped for this. You guys ready? No. No? <laughs> I'm excited. It's been no. a while since I had dry age. Let's see. Let's see. Go for it, Angel. When Google Give me gets excited opinion. about things, I gotta be careful. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> smell it first because you smell the first one. Let's see. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> what? Okay, let's keep watching. It smells like oh. the dry aging stuff that I put on it. Can you guys tell? It's funky. I cannot tell what it is. <laughs> This smells rotten. Rotten? No, bro. It smells like funky cheese. That's what it smells no, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It smells like you put the steak through a dirty sock. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, the rotten I was talking well, about. Well, cheese. Cheese smells like a sunken funky sauce. No, no, no this is some bad <laughs> Right. No, 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 it's nothing bad. Trust me. It's nothing like Nutella. You know, it's much oh. better. What? <laughs> what? Holy shit, dude. I I thought the MSG and this yeast was like pushing the boundaries, but Nutella? Oh. All right, you guys are gonna see me maybe take a break from Uncle Roger for a while because I am genuinely fascinated by this dude now. We're gonna find out. We're gonna give you an honest review like always. Are we a little bit scared? Yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much. All right, enough talking. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I don't like it. Not my thing. Oh, interesting aftertaste. It tastes like sausage. What the heck is wrong with this thing? Sausage? Does it taste like you sausage? You get sausage out of this? Yes. What about you, Omar? You got sausage? No. No. <laughs> not at all. Did you put cheese on this thing? No, no, no. It's not cheese at all. It tastes like like mold smells. There was no mold on it at all. Trust me. You're going for a second one, Omar. Maybe when he says mold, he's referring more to like penicillin. When you eat something moldy, there's kind of that penicillin type of taste, and that would make a lot of sense. Mama, well, I want to really be sure, everybody. Mama is crazy, like, man. If you like funky stuff, yeah, it's it's quite it's, funky. It's quite funky. If you like things that taste horrible, <laughs> it's I, guess, then. I guess Mama is, is one of those type of people. There's a hint of something good in there. It's but a hint I, of steak. Like I, deep in I there? I can't put deep. my finger on it. That's why I keep going back to it. Cause like, You're not gonna it's be bad. But if I can pinpoint that one little thing, that might make the steak better next time. I get sausage, Mama get funkiness, Angel get, I don't like it. Mold. It was dry aging yeast. It is not good. I highly recommend not doing it. The <laughs> smell is very nice. But at the same time, it's not pleasant when you take the bite. All right. Officially, my first Guga Foods video. Um, listen, man, I can't really grade this. Uh, this is not like he's presenting some authentic version or his version of a, a classic dish. You know, he is doing something that, like, I know how to cook steaks very well, but I am by no means like, you know, I don't dry age at home. Uh, in my past restaurants, we would buy the proteins already dry aged. So yeah, no grade for Guga Foods, but I am truly fascinated. And I, it's just very interesting. And thank you guys for recommending it because I'm going to react to more of it because I want to learn more about it. With that said, hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.